Jordan Hatchcock writes RMSO. This is what I found on the riverbank a year after me and two friends had a close encounter with Bigfoot. I got six feet from it. BFRO came and investigated it. We found 12 footprints, 17 inches long, 8 inches wide. It was a Class A sighting. My story is on the BFRO website. Under the state of Missouri, starts off three fishermen coming home from fishing have a close encounter in southwest city Missouri. Well, a year later, it was winter. I was at the river six miles from my siding. The water just went down and left a layer of mud about eight inches deep on the bank. I noticed these prints going from the highway down to the river. I called BFRO again. They sent one of the same investigators that checked out my close encounter. He just acted like he had other things to do and said that they were just bear tracks. Tell me what you think. Seems like a bear would leave claw prints. RMSO responds. Hi Jordan, where are the claw marks? Wrong shape for bear too. Any of the bear tracks I've ever saw, whether it's grizzly or black bear, have claw marks. And if it's going to sink in eight inches, there would be claw marks on every single one of those. So I do not agree with this investigator's assessment. Jordan responds, these are about like the first ones at my first encounter, anywhere from 16 to 8 inches long and 8 inches wide. He sends us what he reported to BFRO. I want to go over his Bigfoot sighting report, these prints that he found a year later. He says they're just like the first ones that he's sighting and... I think they look Bigfoot shape without claws, so gonna take these seriously. Here's his Bigfoot sighting report from the year before. It was 12.50 a.m. Labor Day. Was on the way home fishing with two buddies. I was taking one home when he said, what is that, a big dog up ahead? There was a trash can up ahead and something was trying to hide behind it, but it was too big. I got 15 feet from the trash can and it stood up. I never in my life was prepared for what I saw. We all looked at it. I pulled in real fast and it took off in front of my headlights. Ten foot from us, it had long hair about five or six inches long and turned and looked at us twice to see if we were on its tail, I guess. This was a face-to-face encounter with this thing. He had his head in a trash can eating something. That's how we got so close he didn't see us coming. He left a footprint behind and the police took a picture of it. What really sucks is no one really takes us seriously on this. We all three know what we saw. He was 15 feet at the most from us the whole time when we were chasing it in my truck. It ran behind a building where I couldn't drive. I went and looked in the trash can to see what he was eating. There was some trash someone threw in there that had some McDonald's. There was cupcakes and chocolate milk container in it. The bank is right across the street from where we spotted the thing. I know that there's a good chance they might have it on one of their cameras. There's a bunch of cameras pointed all over the bank. If there's footage, it's some good stuff. There are a bunch of go boxes of food and trash by the creek where something has been taking food out of the trash can and eating it by the creek. The other two witnesses in the truck were with me. They saw it plain as day for 8 seconds or so as it ran in front of my truck 15 feet away, trying to run from my truck. BFRO investigator Larry Newman on September 12th, 6 days after the sighting. Investigator Ron Bowles and I met with the witnesses at the location of the sighting. After several hours of interviews and inspection of the site, we located an additional footprint. The footprint was 16 inches long and 8 inches wide. Here are additional details of the sighting. The passenger in the vehicle was the first one to notice something beside the trash can as they approached. At about 120 feet from the trash can, the creature ducked down behind the can and attempted to hide. At first, the witnesses thought it might be a dog, but then realized it was something else. As they drew even with the trash can, The creature turned away from it and began to run away on four legs. The witnesses turned off of the street and began to follow it. As they pulled up alongside the creature, it was about six feet from the driver's side of the front of the truck. It turned to look at them while on all fours and then stopped. As it passed across in front of the truck at a distance of ten feet, it stood on two legs and walked ahead of them. It then looked at them over its left shoulder and turned and walked behind a building to the creek. The witness described the hair on the back of the creature and the stocky build. They described a creature about six and a half to seven feet tall with a shoulder width of about three feet. Very heavy muscular legs, arms, and body. The face had a flat nose, 
black around the eye areas and small ears, they described the muscles in the arms, legs, and body to be pronounced and defined, which would have been impossible to distinguish in any type of fake suit. The hair, not fur, was four to five inches in length on the lower back and two to three inches in length over the rest of the body. The hair was reddish brown color and not messy and matted as often described. The face was black. The area is about 20 miles from Jay, Oklahoma, where other sightings have occurred. The area of Honey Creek and the east side of the city is densely wooded. After this lengthy and detailed interview, we believe this to be a close contact Class A sighting. Investigation is continuing and this report will be updated when additional information is available. Hi Jordan, we really appreciate your Bigfoot sighting. If anybody else has had a Bigfoot sighting, please email us at rmsobigfoot at gmail.com. A lot of people have a stereotype of a Bigfoot that it's going to avoid roads, it's going to avoid towns, and in reality, on the edges of towns and cities near wooded forested areas people see bigfoot and sometimes the bigfoot will come in at night uh, for curiosity and this was right next to a, a popular creek for fishing the bigfoot probably followed the creek into town and may in fact eat out of these trash cans all the time since it's in an area where there's a mcdonald's i'm sure people throw away a lot of yummy stuff that the bigfoot's interested in i can see them taking advantage of this food source once in a while i hope you guys enjoyed this Bigfoot sighting from Missouri. Keep on watching. We're going to keep on squatching. I hope you all enjoyed the scenery that we showed. Did not want to show trash cans in the city. The areas that Bigfoot is going to dwell 99.9% .9 of the time. A lot of the tracks they found along the creek in the forest. We went and looked, and there are a lot of Bigfoot sightings in these areas around um, the Honey Creek area of Missouri. And like we say, whether your sighting happened yesterday, last week, or 100 years ago, we want to hear from you. We want to know the history of Bigfoot sighting in areas. It also gives us a picture or a window into the life of Bigfoot.